Hello, writer, and welcome back to my life. Writer Wednesday, the day where I give you my best tips and advice on the art and the business of writing and tell you how I do what I do as an indie author. Today, I want to talk to you about Amazon discounts and how they affect indie and traditional authors, bookstores, and most importantly, readers. Because you see, recently, I saw a thread on Tumblr. Yeah, Tumblr still exists, by the way. And this thread, which I will link in the description, complained that Amazon was devaluing literature. Because Amazon often discounts the books you see on their store to prices that bookstores can't compete with. In this thread, various people said that bookstores don't upcharge on books sales, and because Amazon does, this hurts traditional publishers and threatens to drive them out of the industry. They also seem to imply that the manufacturer's suggested retail price of books from traditional publishers are the bare minimum required for publishers to make any money at all. And they also seem to think that whenever you buy a discounted book on Amazon, you're doing harm not only to the bookstore where you should have bought the book for full price, but also to the author and the publisher of that book. Now, these sentiments are good-hearted. These people want to help authors, but they're wrong. And just as a warning, my response is gonna get a little long. Because apparently I have lots of time to sit around writing Medium articles and YouTube scripts instead of, you know, my next book. So this Tumblr thread painted a very rosy picture of traditional publishing. And I get it. Publishing has been around for a long time, it's created classic works that have changed people's lives, and there are a lot of good people in the industry. And on the other side, Amazon does do many bad things as a business. Their workers are treated awfully, and their CEO seems to be some sort of Bond supervillain who would rather use his money for a vanity space project than to actually help people. Book pricing, however, is not not the hill to die on when it comes to defending traditional publishing. First things first, Amazon is able to discount books by up to 55% quite comfortably. Why 55%? Because that is their share of the retail value of the book sale. When you buy a book on Amazon, 55% of the price goes to Amazon, 45% to the publisher. Now what happens when you buy a book at Barnes & Noble? Well, it's the exact same thing. 55% of the price goes to Barnes & Noble, 45% to the publisher. How about an indie bookstore? Yeah, again, 55% of the price goes to the bookstore. 45% goes to the publisher. Point is, everyone's pricing works by the same rules. Whenever a book is sold, wherever it's sold, 45% goes to the publisher. And this is true no matter if the book is discounted or not. So Amazon can very easily dip into their 55% share and still make a profit because their overhead costs are so low, which again is because of their awful business practices. I don't want to discount or forget that. Although, newsflash, and not to get too far into whataboutism, but book publishers and book printers use many of the same business practices as Amazon and are sometimes far worse. Did you know most of of your favorite best-selling books are printed in Asia by workers that are paid not enough? Amazon may be delivering those books by way of unscrupulous business practices, but I learned it from watching you. Applies here. The books themselves were produced by companies who treat their workers much worse. The point here is that whether Amazon discounts a book or not, the publisher and the author still get paid. And they get paid the same amount as if you bought the book at full price. So me, as an indie author and a publisher, I honestly love that Amazon will sometimes discount my books. I wish they'd tell me when they do it, because then I could tell my audience, hey, my book is on sale. I know a lot of you are financially strapped, so if you've been waiting for a discount. Here it is. I've accepted the reality that if my books are always at full price, there are people out there who would read my books in print, but who won't be able to, and that sucks. Speaking of print specifically, you know what traditional publishers absolutely hate, hate, hate? Ebooks. They fucking despise the things. They often charge more for ebook copies of new releases than for the print book. And that makes even less sense because, as I mentioned, a publisher gets 45% of the sale of a print book. On ebooks, they get 70%. Yet they will price ebooks, of which they get 70%, higher than their print book, of which they get 45%. And of course, individual ebook copies cost them nothing to produce or distribute, while print books come with printing costs, delivery costs, and return costs. That doesn't make any sense unless publishers hate ebooks. Which they do. But why? Because publishers create agreements with printers and suppliers that they will purchase, print, and distribute a certain amount of paper per year. They do that to get discounts on the paper they use, and paper is getting more and more expensive. But if they don't actually sell all that paper, well, then they're losing money. Publishers literally don't care that a growing number of readers prefer ebooks because of cost and space. Publishers have got to print and sell that paper. And don't get me wrong, I'm the biggest print book lover in the world. I only read print books. I can afford to buy print books, and I can afford the space in my home to have lots of bookshelves with lots of print books on them. I love print books. But the way print publishing conducts their business makes absolutely no sense. So the second thing to know is that publishers themselves are hugely responsible for driving down the cost of print books as low as they can and driving up the cost of ebooks as much as they can. So here's another thing, and this is one I literally can't understand the motivation behind. There should be an incredibly easy solution to all this. You might even have already thought of it while you've been watching. Why not just head to the publisher's website and buy the book directly from them if you want to support them? Oh, that's right. You literally can't. 
publishers don't have stores on their websites in 2019. If you go to Penguin Books website and click on one of their upcoming books, you get a pre-order button. And when you click on that button, it asks if you want to pre-order from Amazon or Barnes and Noble or a bunch of other bookstores, not Penguin. Publishers, for some reason, don't sell books directly to customers, despite the fact that they could do so easily and wouldn't have to give up the 55% they give up when they sell through a bookstore. Why the hell would they not do this? Like I said, I understand the reasoning behind most of what I'm saying here, even when I disagree, but I simply cannot comprehend this. Despite every sign that they should be changing their business practices, they aren't. They want to continue to push paper books produced in huge offset print runs. And they want those books to be sold at physical bookstores, not directly from the publisher. Only new, small, indie publishers, like the one I run, are trying new business models to try and break free from the traditional publishing model. Publishers have always had options that could turn them into legitimate Amazon competitors overnight, but sheer inertia keeps them locked into business practices that are over a century old, and that includes overcharging for books. Yes, overcharging. Despite the fact that we just talked about how publishers are always trying to reduce the cost of books as much as they can, they still always charge more than they need to for print books. And here's why. It's an actual running philosophy in the traditional publishing industry that two out of every five books are going to lose money, two out of five are going to break even, and that last one is going to be a huge runaway bestseller that makes the publisher profitable. Now understand this applies to new books by emerging authors. Obviously they know Stephen King's latest is going to be a huge hit, until it isn't, because everyone writes a less than perfect book sometimes, and when that happens, his publisher massively overprints it and then has to pulp most of the copies they printed. But when publishers acquire authors, they're throwing spaghetti at the wall. They sign authors, snatch up as many rights as they can for as long as they can, and go to publication. But they do it planning for the fact that 40% of those authors are going to be failures. The problem is they don't know which 40% it's going to be. They're guessing. Now, some people have better guesses than others. The people at the top of traditional publishing are there because they have a slightly better guess rate than everyone else. And because they know how to use marketing clout to make their guesses more accurate more of the time. But they're still guessing, and they still get it wrong, often. So in order to make enough money to cover the cost of the large number of books that will fail, as well as the large number of books that will break about even, they have to overcharge on all books, because then they'll recover their money on the 20% that become bestsellers, which again, they can't predict. Now this wouldn't be a problem if these publishers understood their customers better and could more accurately predict how many copies they were actually going to sell. It wouldn't be a problem if they weren't so obsessed with big print runs because of paper contracts and could adapt to the new world of POD publishing by which books can become profitable much faster. But they don't understand their customers and they resist change like my kids resist baths, kicking, screaming, and biting. If a new book costs 20 bucks in the store, the publisher printed it for about two bucks and it cost them another 50 cents to get it distributed. For mega bestsellers, they paid even less because they they bought more books at once. For huge books, like actually physically large epic fantasy novels, they pay about four or five bucks per book, but then they sell those books for 30 to $40. Seriously, these are the profit margins we're talking about here. I, a literal nobody, recently price quoted a hardcover print run. If I ordered 10,000 copies, I could get them for four bucks a pop on a huge 900 page epic fantasy tome. Traditional publishers with locked in contracts and massive print runs for people like Brandon Sanderson, they get them dirt cheap. Yet they overcharge because it makes up for all the books they know are going to sink, even if they don't know which ones. Now to be clear, this could be a great thing. It could allow them to take a chance on more authors by making more money off the sure bets, who are never really all that sure, in order to finance some brave new up-and-comers whose voices deserve a shot. That would be great if that's what actually happened. But in reality, traditional publishing is notorious for continuing to marginalize already marginalized voices and creating lackluster marketing campaigns for marginalized authors. They could seek out kick-ass stories by awesome queer authors and authors of color and throw John Green levels of marketing dollars behind them but they don't. And when they're criticized for their lack of diversity, they say, but we just don't receive enough submissions. It's a straight white people club that knows how to market to straight white people, and that's about it. It's the industrial version of the Southern strategy. Even if they wanted to market to queer people and disabled people and people of color, which they don't, they wouldn't know how. And rather than learn, they wallow in their inertia. At most, they publish books about characters of color and queer characters, but written by straight white people and call it a day. And when 40% of their authors fail, many of them because they were thrown off a glass Cliff, the publisher retains the publishing distribution, film, and audio rights to the failed book, often for a very long time or in perpetuity. And the author has to fight tooth and nail to get them back, and usually ends up paying the publisher for the rights to their own work. Because otherwise, that author will never be able to do anything with that work again. The book will languish in the archives of a publisher who never cared about it in the first place. That's why, no, traditional publishing's model of overcharging on all books so that they can lose money on many books and try to get rich off of a few books does not earn them a 
pass in my book. So this all sounds pretty grim so far. Amazon is crushing the traditional publishing industry with the power of low prices and swift distribution. They're too powerful. They're dominating the industry and soon they'll be all that's left. And that is just what people said about stores like Barnes & Noble in the US and other major chain booksellers around the world. The big chain swooped in and suddenly they were the biggest game in town. They absolutely crushed any small independent mom and pop bookstore that was in the neighborhood before they got there. Because smaller bookstores had better staff who were more likely to read and way more emotionally invested in books, but Barnes & Noble could churn out those sales because they had better prices, better selection, superior search and discovery, and a lightning fast order and delivery service for cases where they didn't already have your book in the store. But guess who does all four of those things better than Barnes & Noble? That's right. It's Amazon. So Amazon is eating Barnes & Noble's lunch. They're absolutely demolishing them, in some cases literally, as Barnes & Noble continues to close down stores. And like the corporate shitheads they are, abruptly lay off huge numbers of workers with no warning and little to no severance pay. So bookstores are doomed. Except wait, no they're not. Indie bookstores are actually flourishing. Amazon is better than Barnes & Noble at selling books, but indie bookstores are better than anyone else at caring about books. Most customers now buy books in one of two ways. They order books online, probably from Amazon, or they go out for a book browsing experience. And indie bookstores have always had and will always have a better book browsing experience than Barnes & Noble. All Barnes & Noble had going for them was corporate efficiency, and now Amazon is way better at it, so indies are back. Most important thing to take away from all this is buy your books how you want to, with a clear conscience. You're supporting the author the same amount, and you don't have to worry about your local indie bookstore closing down. Taken on average across the country, it's it's doing better than it's done in years. If you're broke and don't have the money to spend on full-priced books, shop Amazon for discounts and buy them there. The author will still love you. And any store, indie or otherwise, should prioritize one thing above all else. Your experience as a customer. Which brings us to the final point in what, as I warned you, is quite a long rant about publishing. I have to reiterate here, again, that Amazon's business practices suck. The way they treat their employees is unconscionable. I wouldn't work with them at all if it wasn't vital to my business. But it is vital to my business and to traditional publishers because Amazon has the biggest book buying audience in the world. If I'm not there, I'm missing out on 90% of my sales. So here's the question. Why does Amazon have the biggest audience in the world? Because their entire corporate philosophy consists of putting the customer first. That's why they invest so much in customer service and why their customer service is consistently excellent. It's why Amazon Prime exists in the first place. It's why Amazon discounts books for you, bringing this back to what we started talking about. It's Amazon's whole game plan. We're going to have three things, low prices, fast delivery, unparalleled selection. And we are always, always, always going to give the customer more and better of these three things. And it turns out the customers love that. Who knew? These are not the only things customers care about, but they are three things customers care about, and they're what Amazon has decided to focus on. And yes, they're doing this to make money. Yes, they are hoping to defeat the competition. Yes, they're already the largest bookseller in the world, and their actions dominate the industry. Because they put the customer first. They put the customer above profits, for crying out loud. And this is not a defense of their business practices. It's just an explanation why buying full-price books from Barnes & Noble is never going to fix the problem. Even if every book reader in America magically became woke overnight, a huge percentage of them would still shop at Amazon. And I, for one, don't blame them. I don't blame a single person who chooses to shop on Amazon. What are they supposed to do? Pay higher prices elsewhere as some sort of boycott? That's cutting off your nose to spite your face. Yes, those who can pay the higher prices, especially directly to the publisher or artist, can do so. And yes, their support is greatly appreciated. And yes, you can buy our books directly from us. Link in the doobly-doo. I wish you would, rather than buy it through Amazon. But one comment on the Tumblr thread that started this whole rant is just elitist, and it's what ticked me off enough to say all of this in the first place. And I quote, It's okay to be upset that you can't afford $26 for a new hardcover, but make sure that that anger is directed not at the people whose labor makes books possible, but at the people on top, like Jeff Bezos, who have devalued your own labor such that you can't afford it. Traditional publishers aren't the ones whose labor makes books possible. They're the ones who make ebooks more expensive, and who waste millions of books each year in pulp mills. They're the ones who refuse to sell directly to customers, which could drastically reduce costs. Authors and editors make books possible. No one else. Traditional publishers turn books into money, and frankly, they're not even as good at that as they should be, and they take too much from the author to do it. Meanwhile, Amazon makes reading possible for more people than ever before. It comes at too high a cost. I look forward to the day that their business is overthrown in turn, or to the day where legacy books can subsist solely off direct sales and no longer needs to contribute even a small percentage of our sales to Amazon. But I think that day is coming, and maybe sooner than we think. Amazon has already taught authors that we don't need publishers. 
I think pretty soon we'll realize we don't need Amazon either, and we'll build a new system that doesn't include them. But in the meantime, I want to write books, and I want you to read them. My books, sure, but I just want you to read. And if Amazon's low prices are what enable you to finally pick up a book and enjoy it, whether in print or ebook, then I am grateful. That is all I've got for you today, writer. A reminder that my $5 patrons on Patreon can always request topics for me to cover in the future, and they get these videos two weeks ahead of everyone else. So if you'd like to be one of those awesome and incredibly attractive individuals, check out my Patreon in the description. You can also buy the Writer Wednesday t-shirt. It tells people you're a writer so you don't have to. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next Wednesday. Bye!